assailants set off an explosive and opened fire in an attack Wednesday on the premises of the Turkish state-run aerospace and defense company Tuzis, killing three people and wounding several, officials said. At least two of the attackers died, Interior Minister Ali Yerlikaya said. He said 14 people were wounded. Salim Serpanoglum, mayor of the district of Karamankazan, told the Associated Press that the attack on the company in the outskirts of the capital, Ankara, had abetted but could not provide more details. It was not clear who may be behind the attack. Kurdish militants, the Islamic State group and leftist extremists have carried out attacks in the country in the past. Private NTV television said a group assailants arrived at an entry to the complex inside a taxi during a changing of the security personnel. At least one of the assailants detonated a bomb, while other attackers managed to enter the complex. Helicopters were seen flying above the premises in Ankara's Karamankazan district, the station reported. Tuzis designs, manufactures and assembles both civilian and military aircrafts, unmanned aerial vehicles and other defense industry and space systems. Security camera images from the attack, aired on television, showed a man in plain clothes carrying a backpack and holding an assault rifle. At least one woman, also carrying an assault rifle, was among the assailants, according to the images. Earlier, media reports said an explosion followed by gunfire was heard at the complex and employees were taken to a safe area. People laid flowers beside the Moscow grave of former Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny on Tuesday, the day his memoir was posthumously released. Navalny's widow, Yulia Navalnaya, called the book a testament to his resilience, courage, and faith in a better future for our country. This book reflects his fortitude and sense of humor, which did not leave him even in the most terrible prison conditions, said Navalnaya in a video posted on her Instagram a week ago. The memoir documents the famed dissident's extraordinary battle against despair as Russian authorities gradually increase their crackdown against him, and even shares advice on how to confront the worst and still not lose hope. In recent years, Navalny had become an international symbol of resistance. A lawyer by training, he started out as an anti-corruption campaigner, but soon turned into a politician with aspirations for public office and eventually became the main challenger to Russia's longtime president, Vladimir Putin. He was jailed after returning in 2021 from Germany where he was recuperating from a nerve agent poisoning, which he blamed on the Kremlin and was given three prison terms since. In December 2023, the authorities transferred Navalny to a penal colony of the highest security level in the Russian penitentiary system in a remote town above the Arctic Circle. In February 2024, 47-year-old Navalny suddenly died there. The circumstances and cause of his death remain a mystery. Navalny's widow and his allies say the Kremlin killed him, while the authorities claim Navalny died of natural causes.
Алексей начал писать ее, когда восстанавливался после отравления и продолжил уже в тюрьме. В нее он делится своими надеждами и огромной любовью к России. Для меня это не просто книга, а последнее послание моего мужа, свидетельство его стойкости, храбрости и веры в лучшее будущее для нашей страны. Эта книга отражает его силу духа и чувство юмора, которые не покидали его даже в самых страшных условиях тюрьмы. Алексей никогда не оставался, и это то, что я хочу, чтобы люди помнили о нем. Он боролся не ради власти или личной выгоды, а ради справедливости и свободы для всех нас. Любой ритуал Потеря Алексея – величайшая боль в моей жизни. Но я знаю, что его история продолжит вдохновлять людей. Я надеюсь, что, прочитав «Патриот», вы проникнетесь его убеждением и его верой в то, что правда и добро победят.